Welcome to the Chicas and welcome to the Chicos. This is MSR, my students rock. And this is the one and only Octavian behind the Black Army conducting a game. And I'm going to ruin the party right away. Get your popcorns and eat them before I get even started because here comes the spoiler. The dude played the perfect game. So when I go to report, we are going to see on the right zero missed wins, zero blunders. Zero mistakes, zero inaccuracies. The legend. I like to claim that title to myself, especially when on stream. But uh, right now I have to hand it to my student, the one and only Octavian. How was this massive victory achieved? I invite you to be the witness yourself. E4, C5. And we are going to chuck into the opponent's face the night off. Because that's what real chess players do. They go, I want fight. And fight it is. And the opponent picks up the gauntlet and responds with bishop c4. He says, I want fight too. And so this is how good chess games usually are generated. When two people who are supposed to give their best do give their best. Okay, e6, theory, theory, theory. Castles, bishop e7. And knight f3 is the first doozy in this game. The general rule of thumb Contrary to the lovely Mr. Feingold's advice is to always go back. The correct way to go about it is to never go back, especially when not forced. Why would you go back here? It doesn't really make any sense surrendering the center in such position. I mean, if I was white here, I would want to go back right away. So, opponent drops back. I hope that you can't hear this noise. Uh, 97. I don't mind this move. I perhaps would have played b5, bishop b7 first. But um, these are, I believe, interchangeable moves. The only difference is that perhaps white here has a4. Whereas if we started with b5, bishop back, bishop b7, and only then knight d7, then this seems to be a tad more accurate. Anywho, knight d7, bishop e3, b5, bishop b3, bishop b7. Beauty. Lovely development by black. Why too, but it's a little bit uh, incoherent and not really uh, doing what it's meant to be doing, but more on that in a second. However, here is a piece of advice for you if you are a starter or outer knight of or Scheveningen player. This piece layout is something that you want to keep in mind because this is a really, really effective way uh, to organize your pieces on the black side of the Sicilian. The knight and the bishop together is attacking are attacking this pawn uh, in a really juicy fashion. B4 is additionally uh, in that bunch of threats. And the knight from D7 is ready to go to the center via E5 or C5, depending on which one is needed. Knight D2, another very awkward backward move. Knight C5. My student knows the rule. When your opponent goes backwards, we should always go forward. Um, they go F3. And we castle. Now, already d5 is a pending threat, but I really like the fact that we are completing development. Excuse me. And now our plan is to play d5, because that's what needs to be happening. When your opponent is regularly moving back, 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 defense, 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 the only correct response to that from yourself is to go forward, 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 attack, attack, attack. And that way, uh, they are going to eventually collapse under the pressure. They play knight e2 again, um, a bit of a doozy moving backwards when you were really not forced to do. And black calmly plays queen c7. Now, this is the only time when he doesn't get a best. It's only a good move, as you can see here up in the top. A very weird assessment I checked with the computer and it wants to play queen b8. I'm not quite sure, to be honest with you, about the difference in that regard. So, because d5 is the plan and uh, the queen covers e5 from uh, both spots. So, yeah, it's it's a little bit of a doozy to me why queen c7 is not as good as. Anywho, apparently white has got some c4 plans here. Maybe the c5 could be a bit annoying. Opponent plays knight g3. The knight is very, very badly misplaced in the vast majority of Sicilian lines on g3. Simply because neither these nor that square is available and we're not covering the center. My student does. D5. Boomski. As soon as it's good to go, he conquers the center. Takes, takes. Very clearly you can see that this student of mine definitely does have my course on center because he's playing in the center like a boss. Now before he takes D5, he eliminates the bishop, thus acquiring 
the two bishops. Takes back, knight takes d5, and black is already way ahead. Two bishops, a beautiful central knight on d5 on an outpost. Note that as a result of no white pawns on any of uh, these squares, the knight can't be kicked out, and so this dude is staying here forever. On top of this, it's a big fat tempi on the bishop. Rook c1, mm, tempting fate, and the opponent, uh, which is my student, immediately strikes with queen e5, an awesome centralization and double attack. And this is a very, very in important moment, which I talked about in previous videos where I talked about the how to get good at chess principles that usually when one side is constantly under pressure and always just trying to cover himself from the various punches raining upon them, inevitably, sooner or later, a blunder is going to come. And here he plays bishop c5, which in itself is a strategic blunder, apart from being a tactical one, because it's very clear that in the uh, in the white camp, there are a fair few soft whites, uh, sorry, dark squares. And so trading dark squared bishops would immediately render these squares chronically weak. And on top of that, now comes the tactical part of the same shebang. We lose a rook. And really from here on, the game is uh, irrelevant because white... Uh, has no chances whatsoever and black converts very accurately. A couple of more things I would like to show you uh, later here because it's quite uh, impressive. So here knight f6 is actually a result of very accurate, accurate calculation. And this is my mania that you need to calculate, you need to have lines when you're playing out a move like this because it allows a sequence of checks and captures that are fairly forcing. And so now there is a perpetual check uh, visible, but my opponent, no, I keep on saying this, my student saw that after queen takes d2, we just managed to cover the discovered, sorry, the perpetual check, and so we are winning. Now, a lot of players here would be reluctant to go knight f6, because they would go like, oh, maybe I miscalculate something, and then it's a perpetual check. Well, no, that there is no such thing. You calculate the line, and you assess it. And if you calculate this line saying knight f6, knight f6, pawn takes, queen takes, queen d2, and you go like, well, no checks, I'm winning, then that's the assessment. There is, I'm winning, but I suck at chess, and so maybe my assessment is wrong. <laughs> you can't do that. You don't suck at chess. Whatever you calculate, whatever you assess, stands. And swear by it and move your, uh, play your moves by, uh, moves by it because that will teach you to calculate more accurately and also to rely on calculation instead of fears and feelings that are unwarranted. So here knight f6 is excellent stuff and we just take on d2 and once again the opponent is just playing hope chess. Queen c2 is still covering g6 and now we are going for the trade. The opponent tries the last trick which is this rook g5 move that would win the queen and we go nay not in my house my student is also a student of good old dikembe mutambo not in my house uh queen c7 moves out of the fret and here comes the last very ironic twist that uh the opponent actually loses the game to another fork on the king and the rock remember this is how we ended up in a dead loss position and now this is how the game ends so once again the report indicates zero 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 uh in the Mismin Blunder Mistake Inaccuracy Department. Amazing stuff. I'm very, very impressed. Octavian is a student of mine who is capable of playing extremely high level chess when he is not uh, fighting his own inner demons and time control and other things that often cause his downfalls because his chess knowledge, as you can see, and rather his ability is quite high up there. Uh, testament to that is the 98.6% accuracy in the game. Fabulous stuff. Couldn't be more proud. Last but not least, guys, here is a tiny comment about uh, something that you must be wondering. Why is this layout different from what we are used to? Um, I am in the midst of uh, transitioning into a chess.com streamer slash presenter, whatever. Um, and um, I have signed a contract yesterday which means that now i am producing content exclusively on chess.com i guess it's a, a decision that will trigger some feelings on either side of the spectrum this is what it is as far as i'm concerned the layout is different the content is the same so i hope that uh, we are moving on happily from here on and hopefully 
we will get these views even further up and the subs and everything and the channel is going to further flourish. On that note, I am going to now sign out. Thanks for tuning in. I will be back with more soon. Bye.